Hello. Hi. How is everybody doing? Oops. Forgot to mute myself here. <laughs> and here. How is everybody doing? I'm back. And yeah, and I'm back and I was going to start a new series today. Uh, I decided to look at the games of the world champions. And of course, I'm going to start with Steinitz today and slowly go uh, with the rest of the world champions. And uh, we'll see uh, if we have uh, one more more streams per world champions. But I hope uh, you guys like this idea. Let me know. What do you think? Happy New Year, Skeeter. <laughs> yes, Happy New Year. <laughs> yeah. First time uh, I'm streaming since uh, this year, right? Ranier streamed, actually. Uh, and uh, he'll probably... Well, I have to really push him because he's not that familiar with uh, streaming and he doesn't like uh, streaming and playing at the same time very much. But I hope he will uh, he'll stream more. Happy New Year, Paul. <laughs> Let's hope for a great year. Yeah. So give Ranier a follow as well if you want to see him playing. Uh, he's usually very good. He wants to go to be back in 2800 uh, on leeches. And um, streaming doesn't seem to be helping him very much <laughs> with his goals. He, I think he just lost some rating the first time, the first and only time that he streamed and he decided that that's probably not for him, but I'm, I will keep pushing him. I'm sure he'll do it again. So, shall we start? Shall we start looking at these games that I have here? Okay, so the first game that I have... Um, well, it's actually a game that Steinitz wins because his opponent makes a big mistake, but I thought it's a very uh, instructive moment uh, here where uh, where it's black to play and he goes... So this is a game between Steinitz and Anderson, And here Anderson goes for 94, which, uh, which is a mistake. But it's a mistake because, um, because of this idea that Steinitz... Uh, finds because of after this idea black spawn structure will be completely ruined and white species will be very active so for example um, here if if white plays something like bishop takes e7 oops I'm sorry after 94 bishop e4 uh, d takes e4 if white plays something like bishop takes e7 then black is perfectly fine and we could get in in this position um, even with bishop e7 first, so here, let me just go back for a second, this is actually what I wanted to do, bishop e7, queen e7, and maybe take here. This is the same position uh, that I was getting to, but here black is perfectly fine, and I think this is what he had in mind when he played knight e4. He was trying to get this knight to d3 and have a, a powerful pawn on e4, no, and then if you have a knight on d3, then it doesn't matter so much that this pawn on c5 is weak. So imagine that white plays something like, oh my god, what am I doing here? <laughs> so excuse me. Let's say that white plays something like rook d1, and here I think uh, black can already go... Well, actually here there are some uh, interesting moves like, like knight b6, which is perfectly fine and winning this knight here on on f3 uh, but if he goes knight d2 then here knight e5 yeah and this is what i wanted to get because now the knight is going to d3 and yes this pawn on e4 is hanging but knight d3 is coming no? and there's a lot of pressure there's the pawn on b2 the knight on d3 is very strong and i think that uh, black will have very good compensation but what happened in the game? So let's go back to the beginning. After knight e4, bishop takes e4. d takes e4 was played. And now here comes the idea, which is rook d1. Very strong move. Pinning the knight on d7. 
Oh, so this is the thread now. And after we take here on d7, the rook is going to be very active. And without the knight, uh, black cannot reach d3. And it's really, it's really very bad. For example, bishop d takes g5 was played in the game. But let's see what happens if... Now here I looked at the move like knight b6. Let's see if black can actually... Um, get out of this pin? And the answer is no, because after uh, rook d8, knight a4, uh, here we can take on a8, let's take this rook, and knight a4, and it'll be... For now it's a piece up, but here black still has f6. And we have two pieces under attack, the bishop on g5 and the knight on f3, and white will have to give uh, one back, Let's give back the bishop by taking on f6 and then move the knight. But still there are more, more pawns to take here. No. The one on c5 and the one on e4. It's a very comfortable position. Still uh, a lot in play. and <laughs> I don't think it's that easy to win. Black has the two bishops, but, but it will be very difficult to defend. So here there's... Bishop c6 can be played. I've looked a little bit here. Uh, bishop b2 and maybe rook c2. And take on e4. So it's what? Two, two extra pawns, no? Should be enough. Should be enough to win this, this end game. The bishop on c6 is hanging. It looks like white. white's doing great here. Okay, so what happened in the game? was that after rook fd1, black takes on g5, and here knight takes g5, is his idea. Queen takes and rook takes d7, and yes, this this position is very bad for black. No, I, I like this game very much because of this rook fd1 in between move, and I thought it would be a nice uh, idea to show you in the beginning, uh, before I show you the... The game that I really, really enjoyed uh, and I've analyzed is the next game. So here black player rook b8, defending the bishop. Now the thing is that this bishop doesn't have many squares and... Well, if he moves to c8, the only square that the bishop can go to, then there's rook d5 here. And there are so many pawns to take. There's e4, there's c5. Yeah, queen e7 maybe, but even there, um, even there we can play queen a3. I don't know if we can take on e4. Maybe we can even take on e4. So I'm thinking here. I don't know about taking on e4 because there are some ideas with bishop b7 at some point. So I'm not 100% sure about taking on e4, but queen a3 should be enough be good here. The game went uh, rook b8 and here queen b3 hitting this bishop and hitting this pawn on f7 and from now on it's pretty much over. Queen f7, king h8 and since there are some big threats here on g7 white goes h4 asking some questions to this queen on g5, queen g4 and rook a7. Just pick up everything. Rook takes b2, and there's another one hanging here on c5. Now there are there's a mate on f8. The bishop on c6 is also hanging. There's two big threats here. Queen e6. Probably the only way to defend this, and he goes for rook d1. There are so many ways to win this, I guess. That this is what he did in the game. Queen f7, one last threat here. One last try, but knight d1. Defend. Rook e2, maybe he tries some rook e1. Check. I don't know if that leads anywhere, because it's only one check, so I guess we could take on c6, but Stein it goes king f1, just getting out of uh, any threats not risking anything in this position. <coughs> and here, black resigned. Okay, so let me show you this game here, which is actually the one that I've 
um, analyzed and liked very much. It's black to play here. So what do you guys think? Let's let's make this interactive. Would you? What would you think here? What would you play with black? It's a very nice position and very instructive moment uh, that can be used in many similar structures. Um, I've recently looked at this uh, idea with some of my students and uh, it was funny coming across it again the other day when I was preparing for, uh, for this stream, looking at Steinitz games. I, uh, I discovered so many interesting things here. What do you think? What do you guys think here? Come on, let me know. What would you play here with black? What would be your move? It's a perfectly f equal position, not just normal. But uh, black has a, a very strong move. So this game is Steinitz with black and with white we have Gunsberg Isidor. Nobody wants to to be the first in suggesting a move here. Okay, Hex, you got it. <laughs> it's a typical idea, right? C4 to stop the diagonal from opening up. Yeah, we see this idea very much. Uh, well, I've seen a lot in, uh, in the positions that I play with white. Uh, could be in the Catalan, could be in in the Slav, just c4 and uh, and bury that bishop on b2, right? Because white's idea in this position is to play c4, uh, attack the center and open the bishop on b2. So here, for example, castle looks like a natural move. You want to finish your development, but then white plays c4 and this, and this position is good for white. The bishop on b2 is open, the center will open and no some advantage for white. But c4 is uh, this typical idea. I think typical uh, anybody who plays these positions uh, probably has probably seen this before. But imagine that this is Steinitz and this is a very long time ago. Um, so he must be among the first ones to to play this idea, c4. Uh, especially his, since he's the first one to uh, really pay attention to to the strategic ideas, to the positional chess so much. Bishop c2 and now he castles. Okay, and this is actually another important moment, but for white. So here, if, um, if we flip the board here, how should white play? No, because here we are with white and we have this horrible bishop on b2 that I have to say in the game was stuck there for uh, for... No, a lo very long time. No, it was for the whole game. The bishop never made it out from from b2. So what can we play here with white? It's a very complicated position for white, but there is one uh, one idea to get to get the bishop out. Hi, Boyka veteran. Nice to see you here. How are you? So how can white? Um, try and you know get get that bishop out of b2 very instructive idea as well for white i would say <coughs> i'm gonna let you think if you want to find the idea it's uh Okay, not so easy, maybe. <coughs> so there aren't really any great diagonals for that bishop. But we do have something here to improve the position of this 
of this bishop on b2. Fish don't think? <laughs> so what? You just want to see the answer here? I don't think so. <laughs> I'd like to be given a chance to look at this a little bit. Queen d4 was played in the game, but after queen d4, um, yeah, the idea is gone. Bishop a3, yes, something with bishop a3 is there, right? That's my. That was my first thought. When I saw this position, I thought, how can I um, improve my bishop on b2? What will I do here? And I thought, yes, bishop h a3. This this looks like a move, but what am I going to do with the bishop afterwards? No, rook e8. And we don't have bishop c5 here because there's a rook on c8. It would be nice to play this. But then rook takes c5 and the bishop's gone. But we do have something connected to this idea. We just have to start with pawn takes c4 first. So maybe you will see the idea now. Okay, if rook takes c4, well, I imagine that if rook takes c4, already white has something to play for. Um, my thought was here that white can try to put some pressure on d5. Maybe just kick this rook out and play for c4. Uh, what if we play bishop b3, no? This would be an idea, and then play c4. If we're not winning the pawn on d5, then c4 is is definitely my plan. So what if pawn takes c4? This was worrying me. Hi, Christian. I think now you you will find the idea. How can can this bishop come out of b2? <coughs> because b takes c4, d takes c4 was was key. How are we going to bring that bishop to life? Bishop on b2. This horrible piece that we have. a4. But why do we need a4 here? So you want to, to just stop black from playing b5? But I think once you play a4, again, as in the game, um, the idea of bringing the bishop into into the game won't be available anymore. So yeah, we have bishop a3 and bishop d6, no? Bishop d3 and on rook e8, now there's bishop d6. So that's why it was important to open the d-file first. Black is still better, no? There's a better structure for black. But at least white has gotten rid of that bishop on b2 which I think is a big step ahead for, for him. <laughs> kind of a minority attack with a4. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not sure if, uh, if, it will, if it will work though, no? In this position. Not exactly. Yeah, this was nice. Bishop a3 and bishop d6. But you, you have to start with takes on, on c4. Otherwise, there's no place for, for this bishop. So the game, okay, let's flip it back and see how Steinitz won this. Because in the game, white plays queen d4. So it's, I think the way he plays, I thought it was amazing because it's not only all these uh, positional concepts that he has, uh, this c4 that he played here bearing the bishop on b2, but he also sees his opponent's ideas and he probably saw this idea of bishop a3 uh, bringing the bishop out because his next move is rook e8. So here we have an example of prophylaxis. We don't want the rook on f8 because now if bishop a3, well, we can uh, stop the idea of bishop d6, right? The bishop won't go to, to d6 anymore. You can play bishop a3, but the bishop will stay there. So it's still not a very active piece. White goes rook d1 here. And here he goes b5, just to... I guess to strengthen the king's the the queen side, the pawn on c4 bring more support there. 
So here white plays b4. Probably after this move, the bishop is completely dead on b2. And we can say that from a strategical point of view, white uh, is uh, is lost. If of course, you still have to win it. But here, if black tries to, to play on the king's side, he will play with, a, with an extra piece. The bishop on b8 has no opponent. So he can try to use that, but it is going to be a very long game. Of course, this did not happen just like that. Played queen c7 here. So now he starts uh, rearranging his pieces, not just improving them. The queen is good on c7, looking at h2. Why not? Maybe he will get some mating ideas there. Rook e1 played in the game. I don't know why rook e1. <laughs> Maybe white is trying to play e4. I couldn't uh, tell you why, but I think also that white doesn't have many options here. There aren't many moves that white can play. So I guess rook e1 is just uh, improving the position of his rook and maybe trying to get e4 if if that's possible. Stein is go, goes rook e7, preparing to double the rooks on the e-file. And here we have king f1. Rook e8. Queen h4. Okay, queen h4 makes sense because now he's also looking at h7 and there might be some tactics connected to to this pawn. In fact, I think there is white uh, has a big threat right now. The threat would be to take on d5. So if black doesn't do anything, rook takes d5 and we don't have knight takes d5 because of queen h7. And now I, I understand why Steinitz goes uh, queen d6, because I, when I first saw this game, I didn't really understand this move. I was wondering what he's do, what's he doing with this queen on d6, but that's why it's so good to see the game again and again, because now it makes sense. Queen d6, I want to defend the pawn. Um, I wasn't sure why the queen uh, should stay behind this pawn, because e4 ideas are there, but I guess uh, this is not so powerful at this moment. I'm not sure it's still uh, something that white should try and uh, play here. The game continued with rook d4 and here he goes queen c6 so just get out of of the d-file rook d1 and here Steinitz plays bishop e5. So when I saw this game I have to admit that I saw bishop e5 and I thought okay this is a blunder because bishop takes e5, runs into rook takes d6. But then I I, I looked at the rest of the game and um, looked at the game ag again and I started wondering, maybe this wasn't a blunder, no? Because he sees rook takes d5 the first time, in the first place, he plays queen d6 defending the pawn. So how could he miss r rook takes d5 two moves later? So my idea is that he probably saw this then and he simply wanted... Uh, to get rid of the pawn on d5 just to open his pieces a little more because you'll see that in the rest of the game he will use both diagonals and the pawn on d5 is not really so important for the position he will just have a lot of uh, a lot of pressure on these diagonals yes white did have some uh, some chances in the game uh, but they were not um, easy to no, there weren't easy moves to see. So here the idea is, as I was saying, that knight takes d5 doesn't work because there's queen takes h7 and queen h8 is checkmate. So this is the whole point of rook takes d5. <coughs> Steinitz goes bishop b8. And a4 is played in the game. But you'll see that no, white has to be very, very careful. Yes, you have the pawn on d5. But so what? The bishop on b2 is still very passive. a6 was played. And here, after a5, uh, black's position is again very comfortable. There is... So this is the only chance that white had. And that's why I'm saying it's, it's not easy to see when you have just one, right? Just one good move. So difficult to find those. Uh, he has this move, rook g5. Well, which now that you see, it probably makes sense. 
uh, try to create something on the king side. And the plan would be to go knight d4 and knight f5. Put some pressure on g7. Yeah, g7 and h7 would be the, the main targets here. And okay, I still don't see how uh, white easily gets out of this of this position because here I'm thinking, what if something like ninety four, right? What happens if black plays ninety four? Doesn't look so trivial. B five is defended, and if bishop takes e four, I'll be happy to bring my rook on e4. And the queen doesn't have that many squares either. But what to do with the rook on g5 then? So it's uh, definitely not... rook g5 is definitely not an obvious move, no? If bishop takes e4, I was thinking rook takes e4. And here... Nice queen, queen h5 seems to be my only square and then I have g6 so I don't know if queen h6 this doesn't look right anyway I, I guess white's white threats are pretty much over I don't know how black will uh, break through but maybe try to bring a bishop on c6 somehow or something like bishop c8 and bishop b7 at some point yeah this was a line where white uh, could hold on to some advantage or just uh, an equal position but after a5 played in the game Steinitz goes h6 so no more rook g5 no more Knight g5, no more um, attacks on h7. Now the rook is hanging on d5. He has to play uh, rook d4. And he goes queen b7, preparing bishop c6. Very nice how he plays with the pieces. Knight e1. And here bishop c6 is uh, is my first thought. So again, I started thinking here, why not bishop c6? And the answer was that probably he doesn't want to trade pieces because white doesn't have that much space and he has an extra pawn, so he would be happy to trade some pieces. So there's rook d8 here, trying to trade a pair of rooks. After which black is uh, probably still doing fine but you know, white is uh, relieving some of the pressure that that black had previously. So what does Steinitz play instead? He plays bishop e5. You'll see a, another very nice maneuver of stopping rook d8. So bishop e5 first, forcing this rook on d2, on a worse position, and now he goes bishop c7. He has all the time in the world, he stops a white's ideas, d8 is now guarded and he will be ready to play bishop c6 whenever he wants rook e2 and here for example i'm sure that bishop c6 can be played he goes for rook e5 which which is also a very good move and rook e5 with the idea of rook h5 rook g5 And at this point, white plays f3, probably deciding to uh, give back the pawn on e3 in order to ease the pressure. Because it's not easy to find uh, anything active here, is it? Like, white, what can white do here? <laughs> Hi, Dan. Some chess history, yes. Very nice game by Steinitz. Some games that uh, I have to admit that I didn't know. But I am surprised with all this, all these games that I found and these nice ideas. 
how are you then? Happy New Year! <laughs> Since everybody uh, wished me Happy New Year, I realize this is the first stream of 2022. It's a very nice game. Very, very nice game. So here he plays f3. Yeah, because what does what can white play? I, I mean, I think black's plans are pretty clear. Probably bishop c6, uh, probably rook g5. So white can just wait and see what happens after all these moves. And what happens will probably be mate, right? Uh, bishop takes g2 and queen g2. I see it quite, <laughs> quite clearly. So f3. And rook takes e3. We take this pawn back. Rook e3. And finally he's trying to bring uh, this bishop back. Well, back? No. Bring this bishop into, <laughs> into the game for the first time. But uh, there's no place uh, for the bishop. Well, here he could have played bishop f4. This was the only moment where the bishop could have uh, gotten out. Just bishop f4. And here there are some uh, tricks, because if we play rook e8 here, uh, white has this bishop h6. Which, by the way, doesn't work here with the rook on e5, because on bishop h6, and I guess this is why he played rook e5, we have rook h5. And black wins the bishop on h6. So it's important to play bishop f4 first. And... And do we have to play rook e6, or should we just go for rook e8, bishop h6, and play this position? Or maybe go after this pawn on c3. Bishop e5 looks like a move here. Bishop e5, and maybe bishop d2 after bishop e5. How is this move? Okay, there are some uh, some problems with my king. Am I going to get mated with queen g5? No, not getting mated. I'll just move my knight away. But it's not something that I'm happy with. Queen g5, maybe knight. Okay, knight d5 is my first stop. But on knight d5, there's bishop e4. Hmm. Okay, this look, starts to look uh, complicated. Is e4 an option? Oh, in this position, instead of uh, giving up the pawn with f3, you mean? Let's see if that's an option. Mm -hmm. Here, right? e4. Is e4 an option? Yes. Probably is an option. And what... Uh, can we take that? Take, there's a bishop on d7 hanging, so I cannot take that. Okay, what options do we have here? Okay, knight e4, rook takes d7. Don't we have anything? Okay, so there's... Oh, I don't have knight d2. Oh, but I have knight g3. Okay, so there's an idea. On knight e4, if rook takes d7... There's a knight g3. <laughs> I would love to sack that pawn as white. That's what white tried to do, but not in the right way, right? <laughs> uh, it was not the right way to sacrifice the pawn. Thank you for the follow. Um, wait a second. So here we're looking at knight e4. Let's try to calculate this without uh, moving on the board. So the first... The first question, can white take on d7? And here, I was trying to go for knight g3. So it's a check, and I'm going to get the rook on e2. And there are some mating ideas on e1, so I'm not really losing that bishop on c7 in case of queen g3. 
That's an interesting option, right? Knight e4, bishop, uh, rook d7, knight g3. If queen g3, I have rook e2. And there's a queen hanging on g3 and a mate hanging on e1. That white can play bishop e4, right? So knight e4, bishop e4. How is this? Mm, this is tricky. So I have rook e4. Well, rook e4 and rook e4. So that's everything with tempo. Does this work? Let's see. What do you think? Do we play knight e4? <laughs> do you have any other ideas? Trade everything on e4. Yeah, and just get get rid of the pawn, that's what you're saying, even if you're giving it up. But how's the end game? If I can just you know, if I just take that pawn for free, isn't the end game very good for black anyway? Because of that bishop on b2 and because of the pawn on c3, and I think that I also have the bishop pair in that end game. Do you guys have any other ideas than knight e4 or should I just go for knight e4? and see what happens. Rook h5 is the other idea. Wait, does rook h5 trap the queen? <laughs> so rook h5, rook h5 traps the queen, yes? Oh, that's a nice move. So queen h5, knight takes rook d7, but... Okay. Rook h5 is very nice. I like this. And I think queen h5 has to be the only option to get as many pieces as possible. Rook d7. Yeah, it's a rook and rook and bishop only. Queen c6 would be my first thought. Get out of the pin. Maybe not so easy anyway. We do win the queen, but may might not be so easy. And queen c6, rook d2. Does this work? Yeah, knight of six. Yeah, I guess it's just a, an extra queen, and it takes some some technique to win it, but it should be perfectly fine. Yeah, rook h five looks convincing. Nice. So that's why he played f three then. <laughs> he didn't just play f three to give up the pawn on e three then. Okay, that's another uh, revelation that I just had, looking again at this game. So f3, the point was that now on rook h5, there's queen f2. So he was just trying to save his queen then. Because on any other move, rook h, uh, yeah, rook h5 is a threat. Could we... Okay, so they're on rook h5, now there's uh, queen d4. Yeah, that's true. So he doesn't play f3 to save the queen. <laughs> Plays f3 to give up the pawn. In this case. Yep. Takes here. Okay, and we were looking at at this bishop f4 also, no, which seemed very interesting. And the question here was, was uh, where do we go? Where do we place this rook? Because bishop h6 was coming and uh, this was a line that I was looking at and thinking that bishop e5 will be very interesting but then here there's queen g5 and knight d5 looks very tempting but does it work?
Does 95 work here? I'm just very curious because if it works, it's a very good move, but it doesn't look like this should work. This looks like white should have uh, a lot of tactics. And I think white does have a lot of tactics, right? Bishop g7, yeah, rook d5 and bishop g7. That's what I was looking at. Rook takes d5, queen takes d5, and bishop g7. And I think it's time to resign. <laughs> yep. This is what I was thinking now. Knight d5, there are threats. So I have to go knight h7. So I'm being told that queen d4 and rook takes h3 was a threat. So I'm going to go back on that. Rook h3... Uh-huh, and that's uh, mate. Bishop h3, looks like it. I'm going to go back on it. But first, what do we play here? Just knight h7 then. I don't have any other squares to defend the pawn on g7. And here queen d2. I need to attack that bishop or just take the knight. I'm going to go on d2. I'm a little worried about my bishop if I take on h7. But queen d2 seems okay. Very complicated position. Anyway. So, okay, let's just take a look at this queen d4 and rook takes h3 then. Which was a threat here in this very position before white plays f3. So we were saying that if it's black to play here, there is rook h5. So let's just make a move and see this. Rook h5, queen d4, and rook takes h3 because queen h1 is made, no? Yeah, I see it now. Rook h3 because here there's queen h1 made. Yes. Gotcha. This was a this was a threat. Thank you. So on rook h5, there aren't really any options for white, but this one that we have already seen. Okay. So f3, f3 played to save the queen. Then it was true. F3 played to save the queen. Okay, but now I have another question since we are here. Rook e5, no, no more questions. f3 and rook takes e3. It's all clear now. Rook takes e3, rook takes bishop c1, and he plays rook e5. Rook e and here, bishop f4 was not played. White played bishop f2, uh, queen f2, sorry. And after this move, queen c6 played. Bishop e3, and he goes here, rook e8. just trying to find the right setup for the pieces. Knight d5 might be an idea. Queen d2 and he goes queen e6 here. Bishop d4. Okay, how would you play this with black? It's probably winning in so many ways, but we have a, a very instructive win here from Steinitz. <coughs> we just have some water in the meantime. How do we play here with, with black? <laughs> 
how would you play here with black? In fact, I will tell you how Stein is played here with black. Because I think it's a time to find a way to break through. 95. 95 makes a lot of sense. And there aren't any tactics, right? Because 93 is, is coming. 95 and our knight's going to... Where? To f4? But on 95... What if on knight d5 white simply moves the bishop from d4, um, I don't know, like bishop, because the bishop on d7 is hanging, no? So I'm probably the knight's not going, uh, oh, and then you want to go to e3. Right, but you have to be careful there, don't you? Because the bishop on c7 is hanging, so I'm thinking that on knight d5, uh, what if I just move this bishop away? Okay, you can defend with bishop c6. I guess. I have bishop e4 here, no? So bishop e4 just defends against any ideas. But I was curious if I can do something like uh, bishop c5 here. And it just occurred to me that you might have knight c3 here. Eggs and some some checks. Bishop g3. Yeah, maybe nice nice c3 is there. Because now on knight e3, I was going to take and take here on d7. Okay, but maybe the same idea might work with queen e2 and I'm not so sure, bishop g3 ideas. Not so sure if, uh, if that works very well, no? 94. <laughs> and how's 94? Okay, 94 looks uh, like all or nothing. 94 here. And what if we take the knight? Bishop takes e4. doesn't look right, no? 94. Hey, watchful priest. Okay, so here he goes for the the weaknesses in white's position. And that's how I found amazing about this game, how he plays all the time for the dark squares which are weakened here on the king's side. So now there's a big hole here on g3 and you, were, you guys were trying to improve this knight from f6, but you are going to the wrong place. Because wh where you have to be is g3. That's where uh, where the weaknesses are. So knight h5 played in the game. Knight h5 and you want knight g3. And I think once you have a knight on g3, it's almost, should be almost over. Yeah. He plays bishop f2. So no, no knight g3 just yet. But okay, we can keep improving. Bishop c6. The bishop on d7 was was hanging. Okay, bishop g3 was suggested instead of knight h5. But probably uh, there's no threat, right? On bishop g3. Because e1 is defended. It's not clear how, how you can get in with a bishop on g3 earlier. And he plays bishop b1. And queen e5. It's nice. The dark squares. Nice c2. And final touch to this game. Because I guess queen h2 is just as good. If you're wondering, queen h2 should most definitely work. But he goes for bishop f3. 
which is the most forcing way. And the point is that after g takes f3, he goes queen h2. Queen h2 and big threats. For example, here you don't have bishop g1 because this is a mate. This is one way white could get mated with knight g3. And uh, another way should be with queen h3 and queen h1. Queen h3 is a big threat now. He plays queen d7, defending h3, but that leaves the king alone. So we have queen h1 now. Bishop g1, take this one here with check. Bishop f2, and after knight g3, white resigned just before getting mated, but here's how he could have gotten mated. Queen h1 and mate. A very nice game, right? Very nice game and uh, starting from from here where he goes c4 bearing this bishop on b2. And well I found another game which I didn't know and it was actually annotated by Kasparov in my database and I left his annotations here because I think uh, that's the best you can get. But I I want to show you the game because it's also very instructive. Well, this is a, a French defense here. He plays e5, knight d7, and uh, and here Steinitz goes f4. So here Kasparov says that um, before Steinitz there was a belief that the only way to find for the advantage was just to keep the pawn structure in the center intact. And uh, he shows here that the way and uh, this was usually played was with 92 and this is what he means by keeping the pawn structure intact in the center so just keeping all this uh, all these pawns in the center so something like this but Steinitz goes for f4 and he had uh, this idea that now everybody knows to get a stronghold on the po on the square d4 so here he actually played uh, d takes c5 in the game. Bishop takes c5 and he starts on knight f3. a6 was played in the game. Not not the best move. But you'll see that. No? Your bishop d3 and he starts uh, queen e2. Everything that we know nowadays. So here black goes knight b4. B5 was probably uh, more precise here instead of knight b4. Steinitz goes knight e2, and I'm going to reach to uh, one of the very important moments in a moment. B5, knight d1, knight takes d3, and here Steinitz takes with a c pawn, uh, which I think is very normal. Uh, probably most players would take on d3 with a pawn now. But uh, in 1885, it was not so uh, such a common decision. So c takes d3, and we're going to see how he plays this next. Queen b6 played in the game, and queen b6 is in fact a mistake because from this moment on, uh, white can get a big advantage. So this is our first stopping point. How do we play here with white? What would you play here? How do we fight for the control of the square d4? What's what's the first move here? E4. You mean d4? Because we don't have a pawn that can go to e4 anymore. But on d4, can we take it? Or is there a way that I can lose my queen? I think not. I have queen b4 and come back. I have also queen c4. Okay, bishop e3 is an idea here. 
is a suggestion. And then there's B4 suggested. Do you know the game, Toyan? Does anybody know the game? No. Okay. B4 was played in the game. Yeah, and that's uh, it's a very strong move, right? Because you force the bishop out of that diagonal. And um, you conquer space on the queen side, but at the same time, you're not allowing black to to get the bishop out of c8 because one idea could be, one idea for black could be to push uh, a5 and b4. So bishop a6 is a plan, right? This is usually how things happen in the French. So with b4, uh, you fix black spawn structure on the queen side, but you also start fighting for the for the square d4. Bishop e3, yeah. On bishop e3, I think d4 was was very strong. And then bishop b7, I think here we have to come back to d2. Because if we go to f2, well, it's probably not the end of the world, but there's a check here on b4. That's not very pleasant. And I think as you're suggesting bishop b7 here, black should be fine. We have knight f2 and knight e4, but I'm not sure that's uh, that's enough, no? Seems like black is going, uh, is doing fine here. Yeah, so black's idea here is to, to activate his bishop from c8. And if he uh, can't do that, then white has a, a long-lasting pressure. Before bishop e7, now he goes a3, consolidating on the queen side, and here black plays f5, which um, Kasparov considers to be the decisive mistake because after f5, um, there is no ruptures. There are no ruptures. No, there's no potential counterplay for black. You know that here I, black has ideas with f6 normally. In, in the French, but those are all gone now. If you play f5, the, the, the center is closed and white, uh, white is better. d4 might still be very interesting. Not with the idea of playing bishop b7 and not, uh, not play with a, with a horrible bishop on b7. This seems to be a theme in, in his games that we see today. A very bad bishop on b7 or b2. Then on queen f2, there is bishop b7. And there's a pawn hanging on g2, right? Queen d4. Yeah, queen d4 I think we can take on d4. Knight d4. Okay, and here bishop g2, there's rook g1 in fact. But even if he plays just something like um, knight b6 and rook d8, black should have enough compensation at this point. Because the bishop on b7 comes to life. How is rook d8 here? With the idea of knight b6. Does it matter if I go knight b6 or rook d8 first? I don't know what if knight b6. It should be similar to play rook d8 next. Yeah, that does lose the d pawn, but I'm hoping that black gets counterplay here. Sometimes it's better to give up a pawn and get some play than uh, uh, play the whole game with uh, with a bad piece, which in fact, which in the end will be like playing without a full bishop, right? Because the bishop on b7 won't have another chance to of coming out. 
So if, if we play something like rook d8, this pawn can't advance easily, the pawn on d3. And it's a pawn that white has to defend um, for a long time. And that should be that should be enough counterplay. More active pieces for now. Because what happened in the game after f5? After f5, he plays rook c1. Bishop b7, and now bishop e3. And the point is that white will have a dream knight here on d4 that can never be kicked out. Uh, there are problems with this pawn on e6. And how do you get your pieces out, basically, with black? How are you going to to do anything here? He plays knight f8 to defend the pawn, and white castles. And here black plays another um, dubious move, which is h5. But it's understandable, no? because one of white's ideas could be g4, so he's trying to stop this. But on the other hand, um, once he plays h5, this will be very weak here. The, the whole thing, the diagonal, the square g5, is going to be weak. Knight c3, improving this knight, king f7, and time to think. How would you play here with white? How would you try to make use of all these nice squares that you have, of all these weaknesses that black has in his position? I think it's the following move that this game is very famous for. So what do we do with white? Where is my water? Okay. How do we improve this position with white? How do we use all these weaknesses in black's position. What do you think? What would you guys do here? Any interesting ideas in this position? Offer draw? <laughs> Would you offer draw here? <laughs> Hi, Robinia. No, I don't think you offer draw here. This is not a, a position where you want to draw. <laughs> Definitely not a draw. Hi, sober phobic, sober pyrophobic. Thanks for the follow. No, we don't offer draw. We have uh, we try to win this. First of all, because there's <laughs> there's very little things uh, that black can do. So if you really want to draw, you can probably have it anytime you want. So why not annoy your opponent for a little longer? But how do we annoy our opponent here? That's the question. So... 
What's weak in Black's position? No, let's start with that. What weaknesses does Black have? <laughs> Blow smoke in their face? <laughs> oh, that would be nice. Oh, imagine you're playing and then... Tal did it? I didn't... Oh, okay. Yeah, because he was smoking during the game. <laughs> yeah, he did it. But you couldn't do it now. Okay, so on a more serious note, what's weak in white in black's position? There are a few, well, there, there are a lot of weaknesses, but there's something here on a5. Uh, the square c5 is also weak. For now, there's a bishop on e7 uh, defending there. So if we get a knight on c5, well, it would be eliminated. That's probably not what we want. We might eventually do that, but a5 looks like a, a very nice square because this bishop on b7 has no uh, has no squares directly. I was going to say no good squares, but yeah, probably just no squares. So we have two knights, right? This knight on d4 is a, is a great knight. I'm not sure that we want to do this because we lose the, the grip over the square d4. We don't want to do that. The knight on d4 is controlling uh, the advanced d4. And you probably agree with me that now black would be happier without a pawn on d5. So <laughs> that's why, knowing the game, now you understand why I was uh, d4 was actually uh, playing d4 earlier and sacrificing the pawn was actually a position I was happy with for black. But we have another knight, which is not doing anything. So no king side attack. Well, because... If you want to attack on the king side, you want to do it with g4, I guess, uh, which is not possible right now. So you'll have to play h3. And if you play h3, okay, let's say that you play g4. I'm not sure that we want to open this rook on h8. First of all, that on h3, I, I probably have h4 to stop the idea of g4, at least for now. But I'm not sure, even if we play g4, I'm, I'm not 100% sure about opening this rook on h8. Might be okay, but it feels a little risky. And we still have, uh, uh, have um, pieces that we can improve. Yes, Tiny's first name was Wilhelm. Oh, yes, I. Uh, it says William. William is how he's... Uh, um, you find him in chess base, so that's why you see William in in leeches but from what i read he changed his name from wilhelm to william when he moved to the united states and he wasn't a big big attacker no he was a grinder <laughs> so no he doesn't go for h3 g4 he goes for the square a5 and improving one of the pieces that's not doing much in this position which is the knight on c3 and knight b1 was the move he played and this is one one of the maneuvers this game is so famous for. Knight e2 to b3 and to a5. He was a big grinder. Black g 6 And you see it here. Okay, knight d7, but we're not sure where this knight is going. And knight a5. Bishop a8. So now one less square for this bishop. Now he takes on c8 here. Queen c8 and rook c1. Improve this rook. Queen b8. Okay, your move. Quickly. What do we play here with white? Wouldn't Black be happy to trade the bishop for the knight? Uh, yes, I'm sure he would be. But we we are not going to trade the bishop for the knight. Right? The bishop was just hanging on b7. <coughs> was there a way Black would have defended that? How could he have defended? Like, um, rook b8? Maybe. But we, we are not going to take on b7. For now. No, rook b8 is losing an exchange to knight c6. So not, not rook b8. Queen b6. Queen b6 
isn't queen b6 running into tactics with the bishop on e3? Like knight f5 is one move that comes to mind. Yeah. I don't think it's that easy to defend that that bishop on b7. Okay, let's go briefly back here and you'll tell me what you play here in a moment. So this was the, the position. But maybe here is the moment where he can prepare for knight e5. But how? No? Maybe this way. Uh, because now knowing the game, <laughs> I can suggest... Uh, this idea and maybe bring this other rook to c8 uh, just we'll have to see if this works though maybe just queen b8 and knight a5 and something like rook c8 might be similar to the game though no i can still take on c8 and the rook is not really coming out from a8 so is this an improvement i'm not so sure it's an improvement if I take on c8 and rook c1. <laughs> I think that here the, the key is that you will improve your pieces until you're ready to trade some pieces. So I'm thinking we can take rook c1. That is a very sad rook on e8. <laughs> Queen b8, only move. I'm thinking that I would like to use the dark squares here, maybe bring my queen in, but I cannot do that right now. I don't want to take the bishop on b7 just yet. Well, maybe I can try and get my queen in on c7, no? What if uh, something like queen c2 here and queen c7? This looks like a plan. At least something we can try here with white. And if it, uh, if it doesn't work, where well, you can always think again if black stops this. But okay, let's see this. Rook c8, knight a5, bishop here. And this was our position. So have you thought about this? What do we play here? What's our move with white? thought this was going to be easy an easy move for white queen c2 yes queen c2 take the file take the control don't allow rook c8 black would love to bring that rook into the game but that's not going to happen so bishop d8 no bishop d8 trying to Get rid maybe of the knight on c5, maybe stopping me from playing queen c7. I think bishop d8 has more than one idea. And here, at this moment, it's time to play knight c6. Because if bishop takes c6, we can now take with a queen. And it's not so clear how black defends everything. Knight of fate... And then you can take the pawn on a6. And I'm guessing rook c6 is white's next move. I win that pawn on e6. Okay, and queen b5 is of course... Queen b5, knight b5 is of course there. So he decides to, to give black the chance to trade this bishop when... Uh, Whenever he wants. Rook c8 wins the bishop. Rook c8 wins the bishop, yes. Rook c8 wins the bishop here. That's also true. So a lot of threats then. Too many things to defend. Queen b7 play in the game. And now he takes this guy here on d8. The good one. Leaving back black with the 
that horrible piece on a8. Queen c7 played. And here black goes queen b8. Okay, so for now it seems that black is still holding on, still defending everything. At least for now. So how do we play here with white? What's the next move? How can we improve the position? And finally, win the game. That's our next move here with white. How do we keep pressuring black? Any ideas? What do you guys think? What do we play here? Very nice ideas here in this game. Either knight c6 or knight b3 to c5. And what about the queen on c7? Or do you want to take on b8 first and then knight c6? clear that if you take on b8 and knight c6 that's going to be enough maybe just rook c8 in that line so if queen takes b8 I'm thinking you know here and if knight c6 there's rook there is rook c8 right yes and take on c1 and if you trade too many pieces, it might not be so easy to to win this. Because the bishop on, on well, the light square bishop is, very, is a very bad piece, but if you can't attack the weaknesses anymore, then that's not going to matter. It would be, um, would be just a piece that defends all the weaknesses. So it's the good bad bishop. Yeah, it does look easier for black, no? If... If we do that. Okay, so weaknesses here. It's very nice how he has this bird's eye view over all, everything that's happening here. Um, he played on the queen side for now, but let's not forget about the king side because there are weaknesses here and we we talked about them. We in Earlier in the game, we saw that h5 was weakening the king side and that these squares will become weak so now you have to keep in mind all the weaknesses everything and look at the pieces that are not doing much and you got the right idea yes bishop f2 and bishop h4 and if you get to play bishop h4 i don't think black can defend i don't think black can can hold on his position anymore and once the rook is gone from d8 that's it he played queen b6 in the game, trying to stop bishop h4 for a moment, then knight f3. That's just for a moment. Rook takes c7. We want bishop h4 once again, winning the knight. King e8. And now he goes knight g5. I was wondering why not knight d4, but I think, I guess uh, both should work. Knight d4 should have been just fine 
And here on knight f8, he has bishop c5. This was most likely his idea. Knight d7. And it's funny how he doesn't want to trade anything. He just goes bishop d6 here. And then he takes on e6. Now the knight can't move because rook e7 was made. Actually, here this was a, this was made. No? Rook e7. Bishop g5 allows bishop c5. Oh, knight g5 allows bishop c5. Yeah. Knight g5 allows bishop c5, but... Okay, if you go rook king e7, same idea. Correct, yes. I was trying to get the bishop h4 idea to work. That you're right. He was playing for the bishop c5, because this is also winning, right? Uh, bishop h4, it's similar. If knight f8, if knight f8, you have the same idea. And the check here. But I guess it's just a different way of of winning knight g5 and no, bishop c5 bishop d6 and black resigned <laughs> not easy to find a move for black in this at this point it's a very nice game uh, Steinitz Selman very instructive both games are very instructive and we see how he played uh, for the weaknesses plays against the pieces um, yeah very innovative game for the the time he was living in when uh, most players were attacking he comes up with these boring uh, ideas that i find uh, actually fascinating <laughs> in his games I, I think i think they are fascinating aren't they being able to play this way and uh, focus on all the weaknesses and improving all your pieces everything that you should be doing in a game just comes together so uh, so beautifully in the end okay and that's all i had uh, prepared for steinitz there are many other uh, good games uh, there are some very famous games um, that i decided not to show today <laughs> hi laura yeah i think uh, it's a uh, it's a great learning uh, it's a great way to learn things as well for me because i've seen so many games that I didn't know, like this one here. I didn't even know it was uh, commented by Kasparov, so I was very happy to find it. And yeah, um, next next time I'm going to go to Lasker, the second uh, world champion. Oh, I was saying that there's a very good game of Steinitz as well um, that I like very much for uh, the development advantage and how to. Uh, attack your opponent it's the, this game against uh, von Barteleven uh, which is very famous you probably know it uh, the tactic in the end is very famous do you guys know it I can show you the tactic in the end and I'm sure you will uh, recognize the game you don't know it let me show it let me show you the tactic I'm sure that you will recognize it so let me just find a game in my database because I have it here. Where are you? Okay, not in this database. Just bear with me for a moment. I have so many uh, databases here for training. Um, <laughs> it's in... Okay, I'm going to find it in a second. Just give me one moment I really need to clean my chess base it's a mess <laughs> okay let me find it here can't see anything there now so okay Mm -hmm. It is here. Okay, there we go. Here it is. Oh, you, Laura, you know the game, right? Yeah, it's so good. 
It's a very good game to study for initiative. Uh, just to know how to attack the king in the center and how to uh, how to improve all your pieces because he plays with all his pieces. So let me add it from here when the tactic starts. And you can um, you can search for the rest of the game and uh, see it. It's very instructive. So the f the whole game is very instructive, but I'm sure you will recognize the tactic here, way to play and win. <laughs> Just started using chess plays after <laughs> not using it for so long. Yes. There are so many features that I discovered in chess plays myself that I didn't know. But uh, I have a very good um, teacher here <laughs> and I can just uh, go into um, the next room and ask him. <laughs> He knows all the features of chess base, how to do anything. Okay, so how does white win this? If you need help, Laura, just let me know. If you need help with anything in chess base. Do you guys know this position? I'm sure you must have seen it in uh, in books. I think, okay, I, I will have to double check this, but I, I think it's uh, also in the woodpecker method. I think, I think so. Okay, I, I don't. Rook takes c7. So you do know this tactic. And this is the famous ending to this uh, beautiful game. So uh, what's the point of rook e7? If queen takes e7, that's easy to see, right? Rook takes c8. Rook c8 and queen c8. And that wins the game because that's just an extra knight. And here black doesn't even have um, any chances. He has to play queen d8. And you can at least trade queens and win the end game with an extra knight. But what if king e7? Here is where you have to calculate a little bit and see the rest. You have rook e1. Check. King d6. King e6 mm, only move to keep the queen defended, right? Because if king d8, I think here there's knight e6. Yes, here there's knight e6 and on king e7 we have knight c5 so that wins the queen and probably delivers mate as well and on king d6 we have this very important check on b4 after which black is almost getting mated if rook c5 we have rook e6 and black has to give up the queen not even for two rooks, only for one. If uh, rook c6, then this is mate. If king c6, this is mate. Rook c1. And if king c7, how was the mate here? I think we have rook e7, but knight e6 looks good. Knight e6 I have here in my notes. King b8 and queen f4. And this is one way of getting mated. In case you're wondering. So let's go back to rook e7 because it's not over and this is where the beauty of this tactic is. So after rook e7, black doesn't have to take. He plays king f8 in the game. You cannot take the queen because you're getting mated on c1. So what do you play here with white? Show must go on, it's not over. What do you guys play here with white? How do we win this?
Any ideas? Any ideas of what we should play here with white? Not yet. Can't see it. Anybody? Does anybody have a move here? Should I show it? Should I? No. We have a move. Rook f7. That's our move. Okay, so queen f7. In case of queen f7, we still take the rook, yes? And again, we go for this winning endgame. If queen e8, we can take this pawn here on h7 with check and then trade queens, which is the easiest way to win the game. So, what if black doesn't take king g8? <laughs> okay, you definitely know the next move. What do you play here with white? It's still not over. Rook G7. <laughs> nice, Rook G7. Okay, not taking the, the Rook just yet. I'm going to play it because I'm sure you have seen this next move, rook h7. So what's the difference, you ask? King g8? Oh, rook f8? Wait, does rook f8 work? No, because on rook f8, black can take with a king, right? And it's not so clear on rook f8. Not clear at all anymore. I have to go rook g7 here. Okay, I have to mention that king f8, now you have knight h7. So this is the, the whole point. Because whenever this rook gets taken, I forgot to mention that we take the queen with check. So this is what uh, white is trying to achieve here. And in case, okay, knight h7, in case white, uh, well, here in case black goes, goes king e8, then queen d7 is made. So this is what he's trying to get. But king h8, right? Rook takes h7, king g8, and you will see the difference now. Rook g7 back. So if he goes king f8, we have the previous variation where he goes knight h7, and we have all these mates on d7, or winning the queen. And in case of king h8, which was the game, we have the move queen h4, which is the whole point of this tactic. And now queen h7, king f8, we still can take the queen because of mate, but we have a check. Now king e7 only move, queen g7, king e8, another check, king e7, check on f7, King d8, queen f8, and this leads to mate. Knight f7, and queen d6. Checkmate. <laughs> Very nice game. Okay, definitely go and see this game if, we, if you don't know it. Definitely see the rest of the game, because the way he gets to this position is very instructive as well.
uh, always paying attention to the pieces, improving, praying, uh, playing with all the pieces. Um, yeah, very instructive play by Steinitz and a beautiful end to this. What a sequence, yes. <laughs> I remember seeing this, uh, I saw this as a kid and then I, fought, I saw the, the game and remembered the last part. But I remember I was uh, completely amazed by this whole Rook E7, Rook F7, Rook G7 and then come back <laughs> to G7 all the way to H7. So yes, now okay, this is all of it then. Uh, we're going to finish with this. Thank you guys very much for joining me today. It was my first uh, stream about the World Champions, but I do want to uh, make at least one stream uh, for each World Champion. It will depend, because I think on some uh, World Champions we can spend more than just uh, one stream. Uh, can we see some crazy games that don't follow conventional or maybe a little unsound, like an engine wouldn't like, but is fun to watch? Uh, yeah, I will search for those. I'm sure that we'll find those with Tal. <laughs> I'm sure Tal's games will be very uh, um, entertaining. We have, uh, well, I've already seen a lot of Tal's games with Sophie, and uh, you can find that video in. Um, I have it in, on YouTube in my playlists. It's easy to to find it from my YouTube channel, but you you can find it on the Chess Twenty Four channel as well. Uh, and see some Tal's games if you want. But I'm going to search for some different Tal's games, not just to look at the same. So thank you very much again, and hope to see you soon. I hope if uh, Friday uh, is a good day, I'd love to keep it on Friday. Uh, okay, send you a link. Let me see if I can do that. Okay, you have a link in my uh, profile, but let me see if this works here. Yeah, I have to fix that. <laughs> I will add that. Thank you. I will add that for sure. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. And that's it for today then. Thank you guys very much. Uh, and good night. Hope to see you soon. Next week, perhaps. Same time. I will announce it on, uh, on Instagram. So thank you guys very much. Bye.